गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स माई नेम इज हर्ष त्रिवेदी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स आई एम प्रिपेयरिंग दीज वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स इन ऑर्डर टू हेल्प यू प्रिपेयर फॉर योर एप्टीट्यूड एग्जामिनेशन एंड द टॉपिक्स दैट आई विल बी टीचिंग यू हेयर आर ऑल द टॉपिक्स ऑफ मैथ्स दैट इज क्वानिटेटिव एप्टीट्यूड एंड टॉपिक्स ऑफ रीजनिंग टॉपिक्स लाइक वेन डाइग्राम्स एंड लॉजिकल डिडक्शन इम्प्लीकेशन इम्परेटिव वेन डाइग्राम्स cubes so these will be the topic that i will be taking up with you in this video tutorials of mine so this is basically a, you can say a sort of free help from my side to you guys in order to prepare yourself for your aptitude examinations this is my first introductory lecture so basically i will not tell you about what will be my curriculum likewise as i will be making more and more videos i will be uploading it on my blog the url of my blog is gs-india.blogspot.in you can watch my videos there and as soon as i will be making videos i will be uploading them on my blog and you can see it so right now in this class i will be starting up with my first chapter chapter which is named as numbers so i am starting up with numbers in my first class i will be dealing with very basic concepts of numbers as soon as the classes will go on the level of my teaching of the concepts that i will be telling up in my class will also go on go up basically and um, if you want to know precisely for what exam i am doing these things then i will say three names the first one is cat that exam through which most of you want to fulfill your mba dream and uh, i personally recommend that i'm i myself i'm a 99.62 percentile in quantitative aptitude section of mathematics so basically what i am going to teach you here is definitely going to help you as far as your cat quantitative aptitude preparation is concerned and also the reasoning section obviously i will not be able to take up english because my whole my own concepts of english are not very good and this was a reason that maybe i was not able to manage a good call in a big i am so let it be as far as number system and reasoning is concerned i have taught in both the top institutes of india that is kerala launcher and time for education i have been associated of both of these institutes i know what sort of preparation how the preparation is done and the best of quality of classes when it comes to quantitative aptitude and reasoning you will find them here totally free of cost not even a penny you have to give it all my lectures are available totally free on my blog so starting from numbers everything i will take up in detail concept wise i hope you will like my classes starting numbers types of numbers first thing you come to in mind is imaginary numbers real numbers now what is imaginary number what is real number the most basic definition all those numbers that can be represented on a number line are real numbers second definition all those numbers that cannot be represented on number line are imaginary numbers you can write it down can be represented on a number line this one cannot be represented on a number line now what is this number line i will tell you in detail what this number line means first of all numbers are of two types imaginary number real numbers obviously there is also a complex number but complex numbers are nothing but the sum or mixture of real numbers and imaginary numbers that i will take you further on first of all this is the basic definition of these two types of numbers imaginary numbers real numbers when it comes to cat 99% of the questions are covered from real numbers questions which involves the concepts and formulas fundas of imaginary numbers are found in topics such as functions quadratic equations inequalities and uh, maybe in sometimes numbers it can be asked in various sort of thousands sort of forms so what basic sort of what basically an imaginary number is i will not tell in detail what imaginary number is i will tell you the basic concept what imaginary number is and the total r and d research and development and total analysis 
and you can say that in depth analysis what imaginary numbers are I will be taking up when I will be dealing or teaching the appropriate chapter for your understanding purposes I will tell you in short what imaginary number is Suppose we say that there is a number 4 and we want to calculate the square root of 4 that is this thing square root of 4 so if I write something like this these two are the same things 4 to the power 1 upon 2 is equals to under root of 4 the value of it comes out as plus minus 2 so the point is that when in the power of 4 I put up 1 upon 2 the outcome comes as plus minus 2 now in the same case, if I do something like this, I put inside under root of minus 4. Now 99% of we guys have heard or have seen or in some form we know that under root of negative quantities is not defined. That is, a real value of this thing does not exist. We can write this thing as something like this. Under root of minus 4, sorry, into minus 1. This will come something like this, under root of 4 into under root of minus 1. This thing you know, what is this? This is plus minus 2. And what is this? This is i. i stands for iota. The value of i, iota, is equals to under root of minus 1. So, whenever you find i, we already know that it is equals to under root of minus 1. And whenever there is a term such as i present in any expression, we immediately know that this is an imaginary number. So, the main reason or the presence of imaginary number is that we basically do a square root of a negative quantity. Not only square roots. One more thing. Let's have a look. I hope you understood all this thing. If you not, you can rewind the video and see it once again. It is very simple. Under root of negative quantity is not defined because under root of minus 1 is present and under root of minus 1 is represented as iota. Now extending this concept of imaginary numbers a little further, we have to see it in this form. Suppose there is a number n, okay, and in the power of n, we have written something like this. 1 upon x and we find we want to find the nature of this quantity so if I say that this number n is positive suppose it is positive and we assume maybe we can assume a positive value of n suppose we assume 16 ok now we have assumed the value of n as 16 now we assume a value of x as 4. Okay, we will write it 1 upon 4. What will be its value? Its value will come out at 2 or minus 2. Why? We can write it as suppose this is k, so this what will be this become? n is equals to k to the power x. This 1 upon x will go in this power, k to the power x. It will go. Similarly, if we assume that this is equals to k, then what will this become? This will become is equals to k to the power 4 and then k can be plus 2 or minus 2. This is the case. This is one case. Coming to the second case. And if we say that this quantity m is negative this quantity a is negative and this quantity x is a positive integer suppose suppose this 
something like this is there. Now, what we will do? Now we can suppose something like this. We suppose x is negative. Previously we have taken plus 16. Now we will take minus 16. And x is the positive integer. So any positive integer you can assume. So 1 upon 4. Now, can a value of this quantity exist? Now here, it is not 1 upon 2. I told you what imaginary number is under root of minus 1. That is 1 to the power, minus 1 to the power 1 by 2. It is not only in the case of 1 by 2. It is also in the case of 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 16, 1 by 32. That means that in any expression like this, where we are writing is n to the power 1 by x, whereby in the number n is negative and in 1 upon x, x is a positive integer, then the whole quantity cannot have a real value. It is bound to have an imaginary value. That is, the outcome of this, minus of 16 to the power 1 by 4, cannot be a real number. It is bound to be an imaginary number. Because, minus 1 to the power 1 by 2 is not defined. Minus 1 to the power 1 by 4 is not defined. Minus 1 to the power 1 by 8 is not defined. And similarly, so on. Minus 1 to the power 1 by 16. Minus 1 to the power 1 by 32. These all quantities are not defined. How will we write it? We will write it as 16 into minus 1 to the whole power 1 by 4 then 16 to the whole power 1 by 4 and into minus 1 to the whole power 1 by 4 so this cannot be a real number this is a real number but this is not real this is imaginary so this whole number comes out to be imaginary so at some places if your luck is good, you will find something like this expression n to the power 1 upon x and in the option value it is said that the outcome of this number is imaginary then x is uh, positive integer and n is negative n is positive integer and x is negative and something like these options would be given then you have to do it like this this is one form of imaginary number which you have to have a look upon Again, I am repeating it, n to the power 1 upon x, if n is positive, it doesn't matter. If n is negative and in the power 1 upon x, x is a positive integer, then outcome cannot be real. The outcome is bound to be imaginary. This thing. This is the small basic which at this point of time you need to know. Now I am jumping on to real numbers. When important, I will come back and I will explain this imaginary number in detail to you. There are some more important concepts that you know, need to know about imaginary numbers as far as the level of CAT is concerned, as far as the level of other exams like SBI, PO. In SBI, PO, not much maths is there. But in SSC, CGL and all other exams, this much amount of concepts are important, more than important. For CAT, XLRI, this thing you need to know and there are two or more three concepts about imaginary numbers which I will tell you in my subsequent lectures. Kindly. Visit my blog regularly, you will find those lectures there. And now I will jump on to real numbers. The very first classification. Real numbers are basically of two types. First one are decimals, oblique, fractions. Second one are integers. These two you know that what are integers, what are decimal fractions, all those numbers which have their fraction part non-existent are termed as integers. All those fractions which have an existent fraction part, they are termed as fractions or decimals. Examples of integers are something like this, 2.0, 3.0, minus of 4.0, minus of 7.0. And when it comes to fractions or decimals, it can be something like this, 2.33, 6.34, 8.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 
0.57, so on. So basically, these are the two things: decimal fractions, integers. Now, this has a whole lot of classification beneath it. This thing, decimal fractions and integers. There are some things you need to know about integers. What are integers? What are positive integers? What are negative integers? What are non positive integers? What are negative? What are non positive integers? And something like this. So in my next audio tutorial, so in my next video tutorial, I will tell you the further classification of integers and the further classification of decimals and fractions. Thank you.